So, hello guys! Hi guys! Welcome to JK channel and here is Dina. Dina, wow. So I, I invited her uh, to ask about uh, how is being a Muslim girl in Korea? I will ask some questions that I wonder. So, I want to know what I'm <laughs> so, can you introduce yourself? Hi guys, my name is Dina Eldasuki. 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 And I am originally from Egypt, but I was born and raised in Saudi Arabia, mm -hmm. in the eastern province. I am 21, turning 22. Oh. I came to Korea three years ago, maybe. Oh. In 2016, actually, mm -hmm. to study. So, I'm still a student. I'm in my fourth year in university right now. So this is my fourth year in Korea. I'm studying. Business administration. And business. Can you? Can Business administration okay. and media and communications. I'm doing a double major. Yes. What I'm interested in. Oh. So. And you have lived in Saudi Arabia too I for did, a long yes. time. I lived all my life there before wow. coming to Korea. That's really interesting too. Have you ever been Mecca? Of course. Yeah. <gasps> wow, that's. Yeah. Do you want to visit? Yeah, I will. Really You're the visit. Yeah. That's you should, five you pillars should. in the Islam. Of course, yeah. You already did it. No, I didn't do Hajj. Yet. I've been there for Umrah. I'm not sure if you know it, but it's a little bit different than Hajj. I really wanted to go, but I didn't have the chance. Every Hajj period, I had something going on, like school or something, so I wasn't able to go. Next time. Inshallah, inshallah, next time. Inshallah. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Uh, I want to ask that. Why did you come to Korea? Because when I was in middle or high school, mm. I started learning. Korean mm -hmm. and I found out about Korean culture mm -hmm. through Yenung program actually. Ah, I didn't what? know I didn't know K-pop. Yeah, okay, yeah, so yeah. I didn't know K-pop. The first thing I found out about Korea was through a variety show oh. called Uri Kyo Nesoyo and Star King. Ah. It was it was on TV. So <laughs> I started watching and I was like, oh this is so fun, this is so cool, whatever. But I didn't know about K-pop until a little bit after. Mm -hmm. And then I found out about like Korean media, K-pop and stuff. But at the time I was more interested in learning the language. And in high school, I met Korean friends. My neighbor, like, literally like the same next house exactly was Korean. We got close and I was just planning, like since I was young, my parents always wanted to send me to like abroad for university. And at the time I had the option between Germany and Korea. And of course everyone would say that Germany is a lot better, education is a lot better there. But at the time, I did not know anything about Germany. Like ah. nothing, not, not, not even like, I couldn't even say hi in German. Not, I didn't know anything. But you're interested but, in Korea. But I already had oh, I some information on Korea and I spoke a little Korean. I knew, I had friends in Korea through social media, of course. So I made the decision to come to Korea instead. And my parents, actually, they were not supportive in the beginning because they don't know anything about Korea, especially that it's North also- Korea. Yes, that's all they knew and especially that, you know, like if you have Arab or Muslim parents, they're always worried about sending their children to non-Muslim countries. So they're like, oh, you won't have any Muslims around you, no Arabs around you, we're scared. And um, I kept telling them that, you know, Germany or Korea, I'll be alone anyway, so I would rather go to the place that I want to go to and I'm interested in. That's why. That's basically why, yeah. So, do you satisfy? It's good? <laughs> yes, I'm actually very satisfied. I think if I had to make that choice again, I would still choose Korea, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you are working too in Korea. Yes. Uh, I think many foreigners are curious about that because in Korea, it's really hard to get a job as a foreigner. So I want to ask that, mm. yeah, what kind of job do you do now? I work in a company in the marketing slash design department there and we market specifically to the Middle East. Uh, and that's why the company needed Arab people so my whole team in the company yeah, is yeah. people from the Middle East Saudi Arabia Morocco uh, Egypt so like that. Yemen a, so they need Arab people to do these days things. these days a lot of companies are interested in doing business in the Middle East mm -hmm. Korean companies so they are looking for Arab people but there always has to be one condition you need to speak Korean I'm so glad. Study Korean. <laughs> Study Korean, yeah. If you want to come work here, you have to, you know, yeah, put some effort. You have to put yeah, some absolutely. effort. How did you find your job? There was a job posting online. Ah, oh, and I found that's it. That's obvious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they were specifically they were asking for Arab marketer, and I was like, oh, that's me. <laughs> that's me. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, business, and you can speak Korean, Arabic. Mm. Perfect. Wow, I'm so proud of you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>
Ja, tak. Ja. Det er så godt. Ah, I'm so curious that did you experience any hardships while living in Korea as a Muslim Muslim girl? Personally, I don't think I experienced something enough to call it a hardship. Like, of course, there's uh, there could be awkward moments, but I wouldn't necessarily call it a hardship. You know, there's always you know the basic stuff. I have to make sure that you know what I'm eating does not have pork in it or halal. Um, I have to avoid alcohol, but other the than Koreans, that, Korean dogs are cool. Koreans so much. They're crazy. For sure, for sure. <laughs> There's that kind of stuff, but usually are very open-minded, I guess. Or even if they're not open-minded, they try to be understanding. And I notice that they're always very careful around me. Like oh, yeah. they're always careful of what they say and do in order to not offend me or make me uncomfortable. And I always, I was always really grateful for that because mm -hmm. I'm sure that for them it's a very different culture. But these days, there's a lot of Muslims in Korea and there's a lot of people wearing hijab so Koreans are becoming more and more aware oh, yeah. yeah so they know sort of but sadly they sometimes ask the weird questions like as in like oh do you really like marry four can you marry four wives and stuff like that it's like, oh, how do you know this like <laughs> where did you hear this it's kind of like it's, it's, it's interesting it's interesting yeah, I think yeah, Koreans are mostly generous, friendly, even if they have stereotypes or something. Yeah, they're very polite, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd say that, yeah. The last question is, so, actually this is Ramadan period and I'm doing fasting too, so I'm curious that oh, how is fasting Ramadan in Korea? I think it's not very easy. Ooh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's my third Ramadan, I oh. think, in Korea. It's pretty tough because we fast for a long time. Our schedules are not changed, they're the same, so you do have to wake up up in the morning, go to class, do all that stuff that you used to do and you know then have to eat at 7 so it's a bit of hard because you're scheduled for me personally fasting is not a problem i get tired easily though i get exhausted like i need coffee and i'm very i'm a very like coffee person i have ah. to drink coffee the fact that i don't get to drink coffee in the morning before my classes or in my classes makes me exhausted i cannot focus in class i start no falling asleep and then i'm always scared that the professor thinks like i'm being lazy i try to explain to them oh it's because i'm fasting some professors are really kind about it like i had one professor that told me like that his class was 9 a.m. He told me that if you're too tired you can miss the class. Some of them are very very kind about it some of them don't even know about it so you have to I guess let them know. Also it's really hard because you're the only one doing it and no one around you knows yeah, how you feel. Harder. Usually people have dinner around 6 or 7. If you're lucky enough you'll have a friend that will wait with you <laughs> but usually you know it's hard to find someone to eat with you at such a late time. Thank god I live with my sister though so a lot of times we eat together. Yeah but if if not, yeah, then it's kind of it's kind of tough. It's just very tough. But you know, a lot of Muslims live in European countries and other countries that are not necessarily Muslim. Uh, yeah. countries, they're happily, so. yeah. and they're doing a good job. And some of them are like fasting a lot longer than us. You know, what? there are days where there are I'm mean, not these countries where the sun sets very uh, late, like 9 p.m., 10 p.m. Like North Northern Europe. Yeah, wow, this. <gasps> oh my God, that's really hard. Sunset is longer. Mm -hmm. If you were living like polar, both <laughs> guys, 24 hours a day. 24 time. hours, yep. <laughs> so I invited Dina and talked about being a Muslim girl in Korea, and it was really interesting. Thank you for the interview. Thank you for having me. <laughs> or maybe we can eat iftar someday. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely. We should, we should. We have iftar together. Yeah, I Shall eat we? always alone. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Honestly. In China, I think nobody do fasting. No Muslims in China, no. Let's I, don't, I don't know. Start a mission to find Muslims yeah, in China. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> I will post on the Instagram. Anyone who live in China. <laughs> It was really fun, so take care and be safe. And Ramadan Mubarak. Ramadan Mubarak. Bye bye. Bye bye. Mashallah. Mashallah. Come take you.